we are now going to discuss Helaman chapter 11, right? So chapter 11, it's a full pride cycle from the beginning to the end. It's a full pride cycle. And we've seen a couple of these happen already. And what's, what's, what makes for me the book of Helaman you know, um, different from all the other books is that these pride cycles, they affect the, the whole nation of the Nephites and sometimes even the Lamanites. And also these pride cycles are very short. They, they move between five and six years. Year one, everybody's it's 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 in pride. There's a reason for them to tend to the Lord. Then they tend back to their prideful ways and in, in a very short time, right? And it happens so frequently that when you move to uh, to Hilaman 12, now we have the prophet Mammon dedicating a whole chapter to discuss this. That's how significant this is. And in Hilaman 11, that's where now we learn about a pride cycle and why it happened and how short can how short people's memories are, how quickly people forget the Lord, the things the Lord has done for them. And I think for me it's it's a warning, right? And a, a strong reminder that you know we always think you know one who can be righteous forever. You know, I think we see uh, for me, you know, the the significant thing for me that demonstrates this it's with return missionaries. You know, we see someone coming back from mission. When you see them, you're like, there's no way, you know, this person can fall away. There is no way they can forget all that they have experienced. And in a short period, you know, you see you, you see that that quick, you know, flip of the switch. Right? Reminding all of us that no one is exempt. And we need to understand that if we stay on the path, it's the Lord's tender mercies. If we if we are righteous, it's the Lord's tender mercies. And it's so important, so crucial that we do things that remind us of who we are. Because we can quickly forget. So for me that's that's what you know I am. I, I'm, I'm, I take from from this chapter, you know, it, it shows us how quickly things can turn, and no matter you know what you've been through, because these people in Helaman 11 they've been through a lot, right? But still they forgot, and they and they turned against the Lord, right? So, so I think not just that, but look at how many times this keeps repeating itself, right? Meaning that you know. It can happen to anybody if we are not careful, right? So it came to pass that in the seventy and second year, right? So another thing with Hilaman eleven is I see that the prophet Mormon really focuses on giving us the timelines so we can easily see how short this cycle is, right? So in the second seventy and second year, because remember on the seventy and and first year, right? Uh, that's when Nephi you know, prophesied unto them about the, the chief judge. And everybody saw it, everybody knew it, but still they did not believe him. Most of them did not believe him. But rather we learned that they started, you know, killing each other at this point, right? And it says that and it came to pass they would not hearken unto his words. And they began to be contentions in so much that they were divided against themselves, right? And began to slay one another with the sword. So we start seeing these contentions where people are like busy killing each other with the sword. Right? And and that's how the 70 and first year ended. Right? Now we move to the 70 and second year. Right? And it came to pass that in the 70 and second year of the reign of the judges that the contention did increase. So this killing one another became worse in so much that there were wars throughout all the land. Now there was think about what kind of a place is this, right? There's just wars everywhere. People are killing each other. And it came to pass, and, and it was this sacred band of robbers who did carry on this work. Right? So the, the robbers were the ones who were influencing this these 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 killings, these wars. And this war did last all that year. So the, for the whole year. Okay, remember now we are in 17 second for the whole year 
these wars are, are continuing, but also they are increasing. They are getting worse, right? Uh, and in the 17th, third year, it did also last. So 71, 72, 73, there's just these wars that are taking place. And it came to pass in this year, Nephi did cry unto the Lord, right? 17th, third year, Nephi cried unto the Lord. Um, o Lord, do not suffer that these people shall be destroyed by the sword. Right? So Nephi is asking the Lord, because he can see what's happening. If this continues, you know, everybody will be killed by, by a sword. And he's asking the Lord that the Lord does not allow the people to be destroyed by a sword. And if you remember, in Elamim 10, Nephi was, was given a, a special gift, right? Where whatever he asks for, it will be done. So then we see this. That's what Nephi does here. And but oh, rather, Lord, let there be a famine in the land to stir them up in remembrance of the Lord their God, and perhaps they will repent and turn unto thee. So Nephi is asking that rather let there be, you know, a drought, you know, rather than people killing each other. And he's hoping that the drought will help them tend to the Lord, will, will create a need for them to tend to the Lord, because now they, they cannot do anything of themselves. It helps them to depend on the Lord. And I think this is the theme here, that as soon as a people we become independent. We, do, we get to a place where we do not need the Lord. We tend to turn against Him. And so it was done according to the words of Nephi. And there was a great famine upon the land among all the people of Nephi. Right? And thus in the 17th and 4th year of the famine, the famine did continue. So we note the 17th and 3rd there was wars. Towards the end, a famine started. 17th and 4th, Right. The famine continued, and the work of destruction did cease by the sword, but became sore by famine. So we learn that now in the 17th and 4th year, the killing stopped, but now it became very, very painful because of the famine that was happening. And this work of destruction did also continue in the 17th and 5th year. Okay, for the earth was smitten that it was dry. And did not yield forth a grain in the season of grain. And the whole earth was smitten even among the Lamanites as well as among the Nephites. So that they were smitten that they did perish by thousands in the more wicked parts of the land. So we learned that in the 17th and 5th year it became very, very bad. To a point that thousands were killed. Right? To a point that even the Lamanites suffered because of this great famine, right? And it came to pass that the people saw that they were about to perish by famine. Now, the people saw we are all going to die from famine. Look how they respond to this fear of dying, right? And they began to remember the Lord their God. Now they remember the Lord now. Okay, all this time, Nephi, I love the part, you know, in Hilaman um, 10, where we learn that Nephi went to every single group of people and preached to them. And all of them, and most of them rejected him. But now all of a sudden, they can remember the Lord because they are about to die. So death, death is an interesting, right? It's interesting that when there's death involved, like the thing I find interesting here is they are busy killing each other with the sword. And that doesn't put them in fear at all. But as soon as there is no food and they're about to die, now they remember the Lord. And they began to remember the words of Nephi. Right? And, they, and the people began to plead with their chief judges and their leaders that they, would, that they would say unto Nephi, Behold, we know that thou art a man of God, and therefore cry unto the Lord our God, that he turn away from us this famine 
lest all the words which thou hast spoken concerning our destruction be fulfilled. Now the people began to plead with their leaders to go and ask Nephi to ask the Lord to turn away the, the famine. And now they also remembered the prophecies of Nephi and now they, can, they see that this is a possibility. And they also plead that if those things, you know, could not happen. Now I want us to to consider this, that now these people at this point, right, they are very desperate. They can see that there is no way out of this. And thousands are dying. And that's why they are pleading with Nephi to help. Because I'm sure they have tried many things and nothing is working. Right? And it came to pass that the judges did say unto Nephi, according to the words which had been desired. And it came to pass that when Nephi saw that the people had repented and did humble themselves in sackcloth, he cried again unto the Lord. Right? So Nephi then realizes that the people have repented and they've humbled themselves and then he goes on and to pray and plead with the Lord to 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 remove the famine right but also I always find it interesting this this role of a prophet to plead for on our behalf with the Lord but many times to plead with the Lord to turn away his anger from us and Nephi goes on to do that. If, if you study the prayer that Nephi offered, it's a prayer of pleading with the Lord on behalf of the people for the Lord to be merciful unto them. When the people turn against the Lord in the things that Nephi said about them, you know, and you ask yourself, how did Nephi feel? Remembering that I, I, I say these people that repented, I say these people have done all these wonderful things when they turn against the Lord, not only do they turn against him, but they also turn against the prophet who who has placed so much confidence in them. And we can learn this as we study as we study the prayer that Nephi offered, right? This is what Nephi says in his prayer. It says, O Lord, behold the people repenteth, and they have swept away the band of Gadianton from among them in so much that they have become extinct extinct, and they have consumed their second pl plans in, in the earth. So here Nephi is saying to the Lord that the people are repenting, right? And the Gardenton robbers, you know, are, are no more among the people and they've buried away their, their secret plans. Now, O oh Lord, because of this, their humility, will thou turn away thine anger? Right? You can see, please, he pleads their cause. He says, because of their humility, please turn away their anger. And let that, let that anger be appeased in the destruction of those wicked men whom thou hast already destroyed. Right? O Lord, will thou turn away thine anger? You see, the Lord, Nephi is pleading with the Lord more especially to ask the Lord to turn away his anger. Yea, thy fierce anger, and cause that this famine be ceased in the land. O Lord, will thou hearken unto me, and cause that it may be done according to my words. So he's pleading with the Lord that, and he's, in a way, he's, he's putting um, his he says, for my sake, yeah, please turn away the famine. He says, O Lord, will thou hearken unto me and cause that it, it may be done according to thy words and send forth rain upon the face of the land of the earth that she may bring forth her fruit and her grain in the seasons of grain. O Lord, thou didst hearken unto my words when I said, let there be famine that the pestilence of this sort might cease, and I know that thou wilt even at this time hearken unto my words, for thou sayest that if they, these people repent, I will spare them. 
right? Ye, O Lord, and thou seest that they have repented because of the famine and the pestilence and destruction which had come upon them. And now, O Lord, will thou turn away thine anger and try again if they will serve thee. And if so, O Lord, thou canst bless them according to thy words which thou hast said. So Nephi is really putting himself out there, okay, um, in a way, you know, endorsing the people and saying to the Lord that, you know, um, they have repented, they have sufficiently humbled themselves. It came to pass that in the 17th sixth year, the Lord did turn away the, his anger from the people and caused that rain should fall upon the earth, and so much that it did bring forth her fruit in the season of her season. And it, came, and, and it came to pass that it did bring forth her grain in the season of her grain. And behold, the people did rejoice and glorify God. And the whole face of the land was filled with rejoicing. Wow, what a, what a wonderful time. A place where everybody's rejoicing. Wow, how many times does that happen? You know, and I love the part that they did glorify God. And they did no more seek to destroy Nephi, but they did esteem him as a great prophet and a man of God, having great power and authority given unto him from God. And I think that's that's the distinct thing, that when the whole nation sustained Nephi as a prophet of God, they were blessed. And I think for us today, that's what we need to be reminded of that is so important to sustain the prophet because when we do that and we follow his teachings we will be blessed like these people but when they decided to try to kill him when they decided to go against his teachings this they, they suffered unspeakable things that's what we can see here right um and we learned that the people began to prosper again in the land and began to build up you know, uh, their waste places right? and began to multiply and spread even until they did cover the whole face of the earth, both on northward and on the southward, from the sea west to the sea east. Okay, So then we moved to the year seven, uh, 76. Okay, it came to pass that, in, uh, that the 76th year did end in peace. Right? In the 17th, 7th year, began in peace, and the church did spread throughout the face of all the land. And the more part of the people, both the Nephites and the Lemonites, did belong to the church. So we learned that the major people belonged to the church, but not everybody belonged to the church. right? And they did have exceedingly great peace in the land, and thus ended the 17th and 7th year. Right? So there was growth in the church. And most of the Nephites and the Lamanites were church members, and that's why there was peace in the land. And and also they had peace in the seventh and eighth year, right? Save it were a few contentions concerning the points of doctrine which had been laid down by the prophets. In the seventy and ninth year, there began to be much strife, but it came to pass that Nephi and Lehi and many of their brethren who knew concerning the true points of doctrine, having many revelations daily. Therefore they did preach unto the people in so much that they did put an end to their strife in that same year. Right, so we learn that 17th and 9th year, there was some contention concerning some points of doctrine, right, but it comes back to the same point, that by listening to the prophet, by looking to the prophet, they were able to resolve most of the issues. And I think for me, that's, that's the constant theme, the, the role of a prophet and the importance the prophet plays in, in our lives and how we will be blessed if we look to the prophet. And it came to pass in, this, in the 80th year of the reign of the judges over the people of Nephi, there were a certain number of the dissenters from the people of Nephi who had some years before gone over the Lamanites and taken upon themselves the name of Lamanites. 
and also a certain number who were real descendants of the Lamanites being stirred up to anger by them or by those dissenters. Therefore, they commenced a war with their brethren. And that's another thing I see happening a lot, is that you have a lot of people, uh, you have people who are church members who fall away and they become the reason everything happens. And we see that there were people who belong to the church, they fall away and then they started pulling in Lamanites, you know, instilling anger in, in, in them. And then they started a war. Okay. And that's that's the eightieth year. Right? So let me bring that back. So we must year year seventy three there was famine. Right? And then now we are in year eighty. Remember this. Year seventy and uh, seventy three there was famine. Now we are in year eighty, which is a period of what? Seventy four, seventy seventy three, four, five. Six, seven, okay, eight, nine, eighty. Now there's a falling away now, right? So that's it's a very short period of time, just a couple of years, right? Um, and then, um, and they did commit murder and plunder, right? This this group. And they would retreat back into the mountains and into the wilderness and secret places, hiding themselves that they could not be dis discovered, receiving daily and additional to their numbers, insomuch that there were dissenters that went forth unto them. Right? So we learn that now there's people who are falling away from the church. And these people, they are the ones who add strength to, the, to, to, to these ones uh, who are hiding themselves in the wilderness, in the mountains, in the secret places. And thus in, in, in this in time, even in the space of not many years, they became an exceedingly great band of robbers. And they did search out all the secret plans of Gardianton. And they did become robbers of Gardianton. And now behold, these robbers did make havoc, yea, even great destruction among the people of Nephi, and also among the people of the Lamanites. So what we learn here is Lamanites and Nephites, you know, they get along now. But now the dissenters, people that have fallen away, and we learned earlier that most of the Nephites and Lamanites were church members, but now those who had fallen away, you know, have created now this band of robbers and they've pulled in Lamanites and they are busy gaining strength from those who falls who were falling away from from the church. Right? And they're becoming strong and strong and they're creating havoc among the Nephites and the Lamanites. And it came to pass that it was expedient that there should be a stop put to this work of destruction. Therefore they send an army of strong men into the wilderness and upon the mountains to search out this band of robbers and to destroy them. Right? So they it was just becoming now unbearable. That's why the, the, the Nephites Lamanites put together an army to go and find these people and destroy them. Behold, it came to pass that in that same year, they were driven back, even into their own lands. So they went to fight these robbers, but they were so strong that they were able to drive back an army, back into their lands. Okay, and that's how the 80th year ended. So we can see now a downturn, right? People now are turning away from the Lord again, okay, from in, in a very short period of time. And it came to pass in the commencement of the 18th first year, they did go forth again against the band of robbers and dis dis destroy many. Right? So the army came back and destroyed a lot of this band of robbers. And they were also visited with much destruction. So they destroyed many, but also many of their own were destroyed. And they were again obliged to return out of the wilderness and out of the mountains unto their own lands because of the because of the exceeding greatness of numbers of those robbers who infested the mountains and the and the wilderness, so they went to try to destroy them, but they couldn't. Instead, they were forced back into their lands because there were so many of these robbers. And it came to pass thus ended this year, eighty-first year, right? 
And the robbers did still increase and work strong in so much that they did defy the whole armies of the Nephites. So the, the robbers now are so strong that they, now the army of the Nephites cannot even do anything to them anymore. They were, they were much stronger than them. And also the Lamanites, and they did cause great fear to come upon the people, upon all the face of the land. So everyone was so scared. Right? Lamanites and Nephites, because of these robbers, now they are so strong. They, for they did visit many parts of the land and did do great destruction unto them. Yea, did kill many and did carry away others captive into the wilderness. Yea, and more especially the women and children. Now imagine that that now this band of robbers they sometimes come into cities, destroy and take away the women and children. Right? It's it's so scary. Now this great evil which came unto the people because of their iniquity. Now the prophet Mormon reminds us that this great evil did not come, you know, because of an unfortunate circumstance, but it came because of their iniquity. Did stir them up again in remembrance of the Lord their God. So they were forced to remember the Lord their God. And thus ended the 18th and first year of the reign of the judges. Okay. And and in the 18th and second year, they began again to be to forget the Lord their God. All these things happen, then they, they remember the Lord, but now they forget him again. In the 18th and third year, they began to work strong in iniquity. And in the 18th and fourth year, they did not meant their ways and it came to pass that in the 18th and fifth year they did work strong and strong in their pride and in their wickedness and thus they were ripening again for destruction and thus ended the 18th and fifth year right so in a very short period of time we can see how quickly you know they have forgotten because just imagine right when they were when, when they had a famine how they felt and how desperate they were, and how much they remember the Lord, but also how they esteemed Nephi as a prophet of God. But now, in less than six years, because the famine started in year 73, yeah, right? So we got 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79. Then 80, which is year number 8, that's when the decline, you know, started to happen. So in, in less than 8 years, they have forgotten what they came from and where they came from and how hard it was and how the Lord was the only one that could save them. They have forgotten that. All right? Teaching us this important principle that, you know, no one is exempt. No matter you know what spiritual experiences you've had in the past, you can forget them. But also, how do we fix this? What I learned from this is it's so crucial that we look to the Prophet. And we are reminded daily of the things of the Lord because we are so quick to forget. And I'm so thankful for for, for weekly worship of the Lord, for partaking of the sacrament weekly, I think that's what helps a lot for daily scripture study, for, for temple worship. All these things, they help us to be reminded and to be kept on the straight and narrow path, this path of safety, this path of happiness. And as, as we sustain the prophet, and we do our best to follow his teachings and to hear his teaching and to apply his teachings, I know that we will be blessed. And many of the destructions we learn about, we will be protected from them, not because of anything of our own doing, but because of the Lord's tender mercies. And I think that's that's a lesson I, I, I'm learning from, from Hillaman chapter 11. And as we, as we look into chapter 12, where, you know, the prophet Mormon takes time to really help us understand and takes time to share his thoughts on what is really, really happening, then we, we get to see the significance of this. 
And I know that um, we are blessed to have a prophet in our midst. I know that sometimes we cannot fully comprehend how blessed we are. But I know that as we study the Book of Mormon, as we are reminded of these people and their choices, I pray that it will help us to make better choices and look to the Prophet, knowing that he loves us, he pleads for our, our cause, and through him and by sustaining him, we will be fine.